What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Doing the Bullmore 21 Aston Martin, 51.8% and Bullmore, the company, uses the quote unquote golden ratio for this one. Hence all the gold on the box and the bottle. It is a beautiful display. Those of you that have been watching my channel for quite some time know I don't buy bottles based on the look of the bottle. I buy for the quality and hope that, you know, if they're gonna present a whiskey like this, then it, the quality of the whiskey inside matches the actual presentation. I wasn't convinced when I was told about this whiskey. I was lucky enough to get a sample before I decided to buy this bottle. And boy, was I wrong. Really enjoyed that sample. But it's funny, even in that glass, it started off a little weak and then as it sat in the glass and aired out for quite some time, I could tell there was older whiskey in there. A friend of mine did a little bit of digging and found that there is 38.8% 35 year old whiskey or older in this. So that's a big portion. Um, depending on where you bought this, it can go anywhere from $250 Canadian to $700 American. All right, so big price range, depending on where you are in North America. I guess based on the 250 Canadian and the fact that most Canadian companies tack on 30 points, especially when they don't really know what they have. 30 points being 30%. Uh, all right, so about $180 cost on this bottle is my guess, and that's Canadian, all right? So if you paid close to 500 bucks, you are paying for the fact that it's a limited edition and all these other things. But the secondary on this is pretty crazy now, so I guess you don't feel too bad. $500 at the LCBO. I know a lot of people that were lucky enough to grab a bottle there. I got two of these in a trade, to be honest with you. So <laughs> it was these two for a Van Winkle 12. Um, I'm sure that the guy got a great deal, probably paid uh, much less than $500 a bottle for the Bomar 21s. But like I said, these are up to about 780 euro on secondary now. So um, I was happy with the deal. I think uh, I would do that all day, every day. Uh, personally, if I can get rid of any bourbon for a great whiskey, a great scotch, I'll do it. On the nose. Okay, so this benefited from being open for about a month, a month and a half, two months. Already on the nose, way better than it was when I first got it. Uh, the casking is PX casks and Oloroso casks, if I'm not mistaken, and they are first fill. Okay, a decent amount of color on this. And according to my German friends, despite the fact that this does not say no added color on it, in Germany, I believe it does say no added color, no E150, all right? So that's a good thing. Uh, and the fact that it's 51.8%, even better. Beautiful nose on this, very lightly peated, but you can get the idea that that's a Bomor, all right? That is distinct with Bomor. Something similar to this that I've tried from Bomor possibly is like, the Lamreg, the 14 year old Lamreg back in the day, uh, that lighter peat note, not as peat heavy as some of their other expressions. <sighs> nice minerality to it. You definitely get like a coastal experience on the nose here. A little bit of coffee as well. Wow, the nose is just so much better than when I first opened this bottle. Really reminiscent of when I was near the end of the glass when I got that sample. And you can just smell the age to this. You know that there's older whiskey in there. 21 is not young by any means, but 35 plus year old, and that's a good portion, almost 40% of what's in this. Only 12,000 bottles. So quick math in my head here. 12,000 bottles. Not a lot of casks, okay? I'm thinking about 
40 casks, about 40 casks, 30 to 40 casks. And 40% of that almost is 35 year old whiskey. On the pallet. Ridiculously drinkable, so approachable. Mouth coating, still tasting it. So the finish is pretty good. Lots of sweetness. That's definitely coming from the PX cask involvement in this whiskey. Lots of like caramel and milk chocolate with like a back end of coffee or like a mocha, like a, like a latte mocha kind of experience on the back end. Yeah, honestly, if you buy this bottle, take out two or three drams, pour them into sample, share with your friends, whatever you want to do, let this sit for a good month open because what I'm experiencing now is one of the best whiskeys I've tried this year versus when I first opened it, it was just okay. It was like, you know, uh, about an 88, it maybe getting close to a 90. Now this is well over a 90 in my opinion. And I had actually on whiskey base started based on the sample uh, as a 92 and then when I opened the bottle, I brought it down to like an 89. So now I might have to bring that back up. <sighs> Beautiful nose. This is a whiskey you need to take your time with, honestly. Really nice. I really, really like that. At 250 Canadian, buy 10 of them, honestly, if you can. Um, it's worth it. At 500, get one for a special occasion. Don't pay secondary for this. I mean, I wouldn't. It's excellent, though. It's honestly excellent. No exaggeration here. Um, I know a lot of people are boosting the mark on this because they bought backups, they want to sell it on secondary. This is something to be celebrated. Now, I'm not a fan of the gimmicks. Uh, I don't understand how a whiskey company and a car company can go hand in hand. I know, you know, uh, there's that whole James Bond uh, shared element to both of these companies, uh, Aston Martin, Bowmore. Uh, cool. I'm not a fan of the gimmicks. I don't care for them. I don't think it's necessary here. I wish Bowmore would do this more often on my, podcast with Ralphie uh, and Jeremy, we talk about how great Bowmore could be if a guy like Billy Walker took over Bowmore. This is great whiskey. This is an example of what they can do when they want to. And they probably have all sorts of crazy reserves in there. I'm going to give this one more sip and give it a mark. Not sure where all the peak goes. I mean, I know older whiskeys, you lose a lot of heat, but there's very little left. Coastal, salt, and minerality, that kind of thing. Not really smoke. I'm not getting a ton of that. Uh, maybe very, very faint. Lots going on here, guys. The entry is sweet. It stays sweet throughout. That coastal element comes in. On the finish, it's all cafe latte, kind of milk chocolate and coffee with lots of uh, froth milk kind of feel to it or taste to it anyway. Um, the nose is beautiful. The taste is beautiful. 
This is a 92, it has to be. Uh, I originally thought it was a 92, 93. Um, I bumped it down because of the way the bottle started. It's right back to where it was for me. And I'm really happy about that because I probably influenced some good friends to buy this bottle based on the sample that I tried. And then when I opened it, I was a little bit concerned to be honest with you, cause I hate nothing. I hate nothing more about doing this channel than giving someone advice that doesn't work in their favor. For example, telling them that this is incredible whiskey. They spend, you know, all kinds of money. They're, they're six months worth of whiskey budget on this bottle. And then it's not good for them. And that's such a terrible experience for me. Uh, I hate hearing about that. I'm sorry if I've done that to you. The intent is always to give you guys the most clear, concise, and honest uh, review. I really like this. Is it for everybody? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know if everybody will like this. Is it worth 500 bucks? Maybe not. Uh, it's a 92 for me. I would buy it at 500 bucks. I didn't buy it at 500 bucks. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, uh, I got this in a trade, like I said, it's really good stuff. Is it probably highly collectible? Unfortunately, there's gonna be a big portion of these that are not opened. Uh, I know that there's guys hoarding it. So if you don't have to spend secondary, please don't. Uh, don't encourage those guys. There's guys that literally bought cases of this and all they're doing is planning on selling it. They probably don't even know what the whiskey tastes like. They probably don't know what very many scotch tastes like because they're just hoarders and that's what they're in the game for. Ruining the game for everybody else. This is very good. Open a bottle if you can get it. Don't go crazy on buying it. If I were you, I'd stay away from secondary pricing. Really good whiskey though. Like I said, that's a 92. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. If you like it, leave a comment below, hit the thumb, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can support this channel on Patreon and hopefully more great things to come. Check out our whiskey rant if you haven't already. Cheers guys.